Hi folks, a couple of funny stories here about two Eritreans. That's a small country of about 4 million people uh, in the Horn of Africa. Um, one guy, uh, aged in his 20s, uh, sought asylum in early July 2015 at a refugee accommodation centre in Dublin. He presented with a piece of paper with details of his name, country of origin and language. And the words, I am not normal mental, on the piece of paper. Arising from that, he was entered on the records of the office, but was unable to proceed to his application pending medical assessment. About a week after he presented at the accommodation centre, he was found by Gardaí wandering alone on a road in County Mead in a confused state. They took him to, to hospital where he remained for a year until the court proceedings indicated that he becomes a ward of court and he shouldn't be in an acute hospital situation for a whole year anymore and he was to be detained in a rehabilitation centre. Um, so this guy managed to get all the way from Eritrea, a guy who has nothing on him except a piece of paper to tell us he was not normal mental. He ended up in an Irish hospital for a whole year occupying a bed and he's now has a has a cosy lifestyle. He's living now in sheltered accommodation um, and he's getting on very nicely and uh, every everything is great for him. Good for him. The other guy is another Eritrean uh, who uh, this is a, ra a rags to riches story. This you probably know about uh, a guy who was spaced out of his mind on drugs uh, who came to Ireland again, um, a 33-year-old now. He came to Ireland as an accompanied minor in the early 2000s, recognised as a refugee. I don't know why, because there hasn't been wars for decades in Eritrea. Uh, but uh, he said he was facing military conscription, blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit. And he said he liked Ireland when he came. He was staying in a hostel, he said, and got breakfast, dinner, lunch, and became homeless after that because he drifted into a bad situation and he became a, a heroin and marijuana addict. So I don't know what he was doing for all the years, uh, how he managed to supply himself with those for about 20 years but anyway, he found himself in a tent on the on the Grand Canal with a few more people, uh, homeless. And there was the clearance uh, of, the, of the canal a couple of years ago, organised by Inland Waterways. And they went in with a JCB, removed all the tents. They shouted at this tent and they thought there was nobody in it. So the digger went in and just tore the tent up and they heard your man screaming he was spaced out obviously and he was paralyzed from the waist down and brought to um, of course a hospital uh, Elias Adana now 33 so this guy um, was also in a hostel he got breakfast dinner lunch and became homeless after that uh, so this happened uh, near Leeson Street Bridge by the Grand Canal in Dublin on January the 14th, 2020. So uh, this guy, Elias, is now uh, suing Inland Waterways and um, some other people involved in the, uh, in the clean-up for for the injuries that have caused him they've caused him and it's it's proceeding through the the civil courts and he's likely to become a multimillionaire in a couple of months time or even less because uh, he has um, has a lot of as a very serious injury will never walk again and he will need sheltered accommodation um he was living in a Peter McVeary Trust house for many months after being discharged from the National Rehabilitation Centre in Dunleary. And um, they provided housing and wraparound continual supports to people sleeping rough. 
then um, the outreach team of the Dublin Region Homeless Executive went to support Elias and they built a relationship with him. Uh, they moved him into a house in Ballybock. Well, he didn't like the house in Ballybock because some of the old druggy friends that he used to hang out with were living there. So, so he was moved out into another place here. Let me just check this here. Um, oh dear. Um, where was he moved out to? He was moved out to a nice flat in North County, Dublin. Um, it's, I haven't got the, the details here anyway. And he is uh, being looked after very well. He has full-time carers coming in and he's fed and uh, treated uh, very nicely indeed. And uh, probably will have to pay for some of his own care now when he becomes a multi-millionaire. Well, he said he's thinking of going back to Addis Ababa uh, in his wheelchair when that happens. So there you go. Two uh, Eritreans arrive here. I'm just wondering what sort of money all that cost the state in terms of uh, rehabilitation centre Dundiri, uh, a year in an acute ward in, in the hospital, uh, Father McVerry's place, now in a flat in um, North County, Dublin, and all paid for by the taxpayer. Uh, the same situation as the other guy that I mentioned to you before, who has fallen on good times as well, and he is being extremely well looked after. Two of them are. Uh, so um, that's how many houses would, would, would have been built for Irish people with the money? that's been spent in the courts on um, suing the state for and the uh, inland waterways and another organ of the state for uh, causing these injuries to this space there, junkie from Eritrea. So uh, thank you, another guest uh, welcomed by Roger O'Gorman many years ago. Uh, and the two of them are doing very nicely, thank you. One of them is about to become very rich. And um, goodbye from the uh, biggest lunatic asylum in the world.